Good morning, Heaven Bound family and any that may be watching. This is Pastor Larry with a moment in the Word on this Monday. Running a little bit late this morning because of the fact that um, uh, we um, processed, first of all, our messages uh, from yesterday. And um, anyway, um, this morning um, we want to finish up a study that we've been doing concerning the um, prophecies of Christ um, and uh, um, their fulfillment. And we uh, mentioned before that uh, the prophecies of Christ uh, comes in two uh, strands, if you will. There is the prophecies of his kingship and the prophecies of his suffering. And um, the reason the Jews rejected Christ is the fact that they were looking for a king. They, they were very familiar with the prophecies concerning his kingship, but ignorant concerning his prophecies of his suffering. Reason being is it is a part of human nature. We want to believe what we want to believe, and we just kind of overlook what we don't want to believe. And they didn't want a suffering Savior, a suffering Messiah. They wanted a kingly Messiah who was going to deliver them from Rome and set up his earthly kingdom and um, uh, then rule uh, over um, uh, Israel, making Israel the head of the nations. We have talked about the uh, prophecies of Psalms, uh, the prophecies in Isaiah, the prophecies in um, um, uh, Jeremiah and Daniel, uh, in Micah. This morning we want to look at the prophecies in Zechariah. Uh, probably none are more plain than are the prophecies in Zechariah. And um, let's look at the prophecies. We'll begin in um, uh, concerning his um, kingship. <coughs> Excuse me. And if we look in Zechariah chapter 6, and bear with me while I turn to those. But in chapter 6, in verse 12 and 13, we're going to see a prophecy of Christ coming as a king and as a high priest. Understand that Christ today is serving as high priest. He's at the right hand of the Father, interceding in behalf of those who put their faith in him. And here in 12 and 13, we don't have a picture of both his, his uh, uh, lowliness or his humility and his humanity. Notice it says here in uh, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. And we go back to the studies of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, uh, God prophesied through Jeremiah that when Christ comes, his name is going to be the branch. And um, it says here that, um, And he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. And um, the temple here, uh, without a doubt, is uh, referring to uh, Christ uh, and the uh, church. Uh, we have no biblical records where Christ ever built a physical temple. But if we were to turn to uh, 1 Corinthians uh, in chapter 6, um, there in verses 19 through 20, uh, the Apostle Paul asked a question. He says, What? Know ye not that ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost and that the uh, uh, Spirit of, that you are bought with a price? Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Uh, let me just turn and read that to you so it's just not a quote. Verse 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own? For we are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So during this dispensation, during this time between the ascension of Christ and the uh, coming of Christ, uh, Christ is... Uh, absent as far as ruling as a king uh, 
right now he is at the right hand of the Father interceding in our behalf as our high priest. And um, uh, if we turned over to the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews in chapter 4, in verses 14 and 15, he says, See and then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. So here in Corinthians and in Hebrews, we have the fact of Christ is coming, uh, and uh, he is going to uh, build a spiritual temple in which he is uh, at this moment, dwelt in, in in the person of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so, with that understanding, let's go back and read again here, chapter 12, uh, uh, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. And speak unto him, and say, and thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne, and the castle of peace shall be between them both. Right now Christ is reigning on his throne at the right hand of the Father, uh, and uh, he is reigning over a spiritual temple that he has set up, and um, and um, that... Um, uh, today he proclaims peace. He says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give unto you, let not your hearts be troubled. And uh, today he is our Prince of Peace. Now then, let's look at another uh, prophecy in Zechariah concerning Christ's kingship. In Zechariah chapter 9, in um, uh, verses of uh, 12 and uh, or 9 through 10, Zechariah chapter 9, uh, verses uh, 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout, O daughters of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And I will cut off the chariots from Ephraim, and the horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathens, and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea, and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Here we have, um, uh, let me go ahead and read verse 14 also here in chapter 9. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with a whirlwind of the south. They're speaking about when Christ comes back again. So we have a double prophecy here. First of all, the prophecy of Christ is lowliness as he comes riding upon the donkey on Palm Sunday. Uh, we have this recorded in Matthew, uh, uh, Mark, Luke, uh, uh, and um uh, John, the, the fact that he, uh, uh, when Jesus comes the first time on Palm Sunday, be 30 AD, uh, he will ride into Jerusalem and they will uh, lay uh, branches before him and they will uh, cry out Hosanna uh, unto uh, Christ uh, and uh, the son of David. Uh, and um, uh, the people would have anointed him king but the Pharisees, the scribes, the high priests rejected him. And so here we have two different um, texts uh, concerning the fact that Christ is going to come, that he is going to come uh, riding up on a donkey there, and uh, that uh, he is going to be held king. If you go over and you read uh, chapters uh, 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 12, especially at chapters 12 through 14. It will speak of the battle of Armageddon and how that Christ is going to come and that he is going to destroy all the nations that come against Israel. He's going to set up his kingdom. He explains uh, in chapter 14, verse 16, that uh, all that are left of the um, of the nations that came down against him, those who didn't actually come up against Jerusalem, but uh, 
we've been citizens of the nations that did. He is going to uh, forgive and uh, he is going to bring them into the millennial reign and they will uh, be uh, compelled to come and worship him each year at the Feast of Tabernacle, which is uh, the Feast of Rest there, uh, uh, which is symbolic of the um, uh, millennial reign of Christ. Uh, let's look at uh, the uh, prophecies of suffering. Uh, uh, in um, chapter 11, verse 12, he is going to talk about the prophesy the fact that, uh, or he is actually he's going to quote the prophecy of Jeremiah, who lived uh, uh, roughly uh, close to 600 years before Christ came. Zechariah lived around five, um, um, uh, 30 to five, uh, to, well, we don't know exactly when he died in, in, in uh, four, uh, fourth century, but uh, he lived, uh, he helped prophesy in building the temple when uh, uh, the king of Persia allowed them in 536 BC to come out. They started, they laid the foundation, and then they got discouraged by the fact that Darius, the king of Persia, stopped the work uh, for a while. And then in about um, 520 to 516, Zechariah and Hezekiah prophesied uh, there that they need to get back to work building the temple and the temple was dedicated in 516 BC. So that would be when uh, Zechariah lived. And uh, yet notice how exact his prophecies are uh, in, in Zechariah chapter 11 in um, verse um, uh, 12. Um, uh, here um, he says this, And I said unto them, If you think good, Give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. Verse 13 says, And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter a goodly price that I was priced at of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver, and I cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. If you go to uh, uh, Matthew, I believe it's chapter 27 there, you'll find that... Uh, they gave Judas 30 pieces of silver to betray Christ. And uh, Judas uh, later repented, gave it back to them uh, and uh, just before hanging himself. And uh, the priest said, well, uh, we can't put this into the church treasury, so we'll give it to the potter uh, to purchase a potter's field, a burial field. Uh, but how exact, how could Zechariah 500 years uh, before Christ was born, know that they were going to, that Judas would be paid 30 pieces of silver. Now, notice also chapter 12, verse 10. Here, um, another prophecy. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. If we were to, uh, um, I believe it's uh, in that chapter uh, 14 uh, also, they will mention the fact that, uh, or I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, in chapter 13, notice in verse 10, uh, it says, uh, or verse 6, it says, uh, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, These uh, with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. And um, uh, then in verse, uh, uh, verse 7, uh, it's going to talk about his cru his rejection and his crucifixion. It says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Uh, they're uh, speaking of the fact that uh, they uh, crucified Christ, and many of those who had followed him 
during his life ministry of uh, observing the miracles and so forth, uh, many of them were scattered because of the fact that the uh, high priest and the uh, uh, scribes of the Pharisees, Sadducees, rejected him, being the religious people of their day. Uh, then the people followed the, the uh, uh, false teachers here, the rejectors of Christ, and were scattered out. So here, Zechariah is going to prophesy both of the fact that Christ is going to be crucified, the wounds in his hands. By the way, when Zechariah prophesied, uh, the um, art, if we want to call it that, was not even a means of punishment. It wasn't until later under the Romans that crucifixion became a, a mode of uh, punishment. Uh, but Zechariah, 500 years before it happened, prophesied that Christ is going to be crucified and um, uh, with wounds in his hands and so forth. And then look at uh, chapter 13, verse uh, 7. Well, that's what we just read to you there. So here we have uh, the fact that Zechariah is going to prophesy uh, that Christ is going to be crucified, that he is going to uh, have nails in his hands, uh, wounds in his hands, and that he is going to be uh, slain. And uh, one might say, uh, why is uh, why is this so important? Why, why are we interested in what the Old Testament says? Well, let me read you a verse of scripture, um, a couple of verses of scripture. Hope it will answer your question, and then we'll close out this study. Um, but um, Jesus uh, in Matthew in, in chapter Luke chapter twenty four. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, he says here in verse 25, Then he said unto them, O fools, meaning uh, those who are void of understanding, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. A friend, to reject what the prophets have spoken is to uh, come into the New Testament and the study of the New Testament totally ignorant of what uh, God has said would happen. Look at verse 44. Jesus is uh, on the uh, uh, two, two people uh, after his crucifixion and after his resurrection. Two people are going, two of the disciples are going from Jerusalem um, and uh, they are on the road to Emmaus and Jesus is going to appear to them as a man, but not as Jesus. And uh, they're going to get to talking. And Jesus says in verse 44, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So why is it important that we look at uh, Psalms, at uh, Isaiah and uh, Zechariah and the other prophets uh, and see what they have to say about Christ? My friend, it's, it's so important that uh, uh, because the Jews refused to look at the strain of suffering that the prophets prophesied of, they totally rejected uh, Christ the Messiah, and consequently suffered the uh, the uh, Holocaust of 70 A.D. when Jerusalem was completely destroyed and millions were killed. Uh, later in uh, uh, our lifetime, or at least in my lifetime, in um, uh, Hitler uh, there in Germany uh, again uh, killed six million Jews and so forth. Uh, uh, had they had they have studied all of the prophecies, had they not been blind to the suffering and alive only to the kingly, then they would have recognized that Christ was indeed the Messiah. One of these days in the future, uh, Zechariah tells us in Zechariah chapter uh, 12 through 14, 
that all the nations are going to come down against Jerusalem. And in chapter 13, verse 8, Zechariah is going to prophesy that two-thirds of the Israelites out there in Jerusalem will be killed, but that one-third of them will repent. They will they will see the wounds in his hands, uh, and um, they will repent and uh, will be saved. Uh, you can read it in Zechariah 13 and 14. Uh, it's a wonderful study, and I hope that uh, you will take the time to do it and that you'll be blessed as a result of it. I've spent much more time than I meant to spend, but uh, anyway, uh, go forth on this Monday, the beginning of the week. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Bless someone. It'll bless you. It'll bless them. It'll bless God. And God will bless you in return.